imperialism is attempting uh, to regain the initiative after the setbacks uh, suffered under uh, George Bush in his uh, offensive of 2003. And I call it the offensive of 2003 uh, because we usually refer to it as the Iraq War, uh, but I, I think it, it has that title, the Iraq War, because it was stopped in Iraq. It was not supposed to stop in Iraq. Uh, it was a, a general offensive uh, that was to begin in Iraq. Uh, and then with shock and awe, the momentum would carry the Americans, uh, American power deep into uh, Central Asia, uh, the former, the stands of uh, the former uh, Soviet Union. And, and in doing so, would strategically uh, alter uh, the global outlines of power in, in, in the world, in the United States' favor. So it was not supposed to be an Iraq war, it was supposed to be a much uh, bigger deal. Uh, we heard all this talk about the United States becoming the new Rome, uh, and the corporate media was just full of this new Rome stuff. They were savoring the possibility of, of a new Rome. They were trying out togas. <laughs> It was good, it was getting good to them, you know. Uh, and, and I remember uh, word was uh, uh, getting out about the, the uh, extravagant con, uh, contracts that they were letting out uh, out of this uh, office in Northern Virginia uh, to reconstruct uh, Iraq. Now they were so sure uh, that, uh, that uh, the place would be uh, secure enough for them uh, to uh, just rebake the whole, the whole country. They, they had an outline for a new city that they were going to build uh, right next to Baghdad. And it would look very much like Houston with great houses. <laughs> you know, they were going to import thousands and thousands of American employees and this new class of, of the Iraqi who would be working with them as they corporatized the country. So, so this, the, the Rome not only, uh, uh, was going to uh, be relocated to Washington, but its various outposts already had zoning laws and, and things. It, it, it was amazing how quickly uh, the, the, the United States uh, 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 projected itself into, into, uh, into that, new, that new Rome. Uh, with these very quick uh, American uh, uh, victories, uh, public attitudes towards uh, the war uh, changed rather rapidly as well because there's nothing that Americans like better than a war that they think they have won. <laughs> and, and so, so we saw uh, very quickly uh, that uh, the anti-war sentiment uh, dissipated. Uh, and uh, one of the ways that we, uh, one of the signals uh, that this uh, anti-war sentiment was dissipating uh, uh, came out of Chicago where a uh, young politician uh, took his October 2000 anti-war speech off of his campaign website yep. uh, during That's the right. same That's right. week that his name appeared on the Democratic Leadership Council's membership list. That's right. And that was Barack Obama. Yep. And that was our introduction at Black Agenda Report, at that time black commentator, uh, to Barack Obama. Uh, uh, it was quite disturbing. Uh, we contacted Barack Obama uh, to ask him, what's up with that? Why did you take it? <laughs> you know, we thought that was a pretty good speech. Why did you take it off? Uh, and he gave the lame excuse uh, that, uh, well, you know, campaign websites, you know, you put things on and you take some of them off. <laughs> and it was just a very routine thing. He said, well, what about your name showing up on the Democratic uh, Leadership Council's list? I had no idea. <laughs> I said, yeah. uh, this, this, this was very disturbing because if, 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 if those of you who know anything about the DLC, understand that that is the corporate bag man of the Democratic Party. Uh, and uh, 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 getting their endorsement uh, is not to be taken lightly. They are the folks 
uh, who vouch to corporate America that you are worthy of corporate contributions. That's right. uh, so when you go through their vetting process, you, you know it. Uh, so this is how uh, Barack Obama uh, came, to our, uh, uh, came to our attention. And uh, it struck fear, fear into us immediately, dread, uh, the deepest uh, anxiety, because we saw that he was a hell of a package. Uh, uh, articulate, uh, clean, what was it? What was it? <laughs> he was so attractive, we knew the blue haired ladies would love him and uh, everybody would love this guy. And so it was, he, he was a dangerous, dangerous man. And, and it became uh, apparent to us uh, that, that we, we, could, we could predict a future uh, in which uh, black, black political, the black political apparatus would fold up its tents uh, and bow out uh, of its traditional oppositional uh, posture uh, behind this uh, great black hope, and that if that happened, uh, then there would be no possibility of a progressive response uh, to this DLC member, ex-anti-war uh, candidate, uh, and that would be disastrous. And in fact, that's, that's what came to pass. Uh, for the first time in my lifetime, we saw a, a, a presidential campaign in which black political leadership, such as it is, did not raise one single demand. Ever since 1968, every four years, uh, if black leadership comes together to demand a Marshall Plan for the cities, it's reflexive. Nobody even has to write that one down. That's, that's what we're all going to demand. Marshall Plan for the cities. What do you want? Marshall Plan. In 2008, not even the Marshall Plan. There was a fear that to make any uh, demand, uh, might somehow embarrass or discomfort uh, uh, or, or burden uh, Barack Obama. And so we had a unilateral uh, shutdown of black political activity uh, that was not concerned directly with turning out votes for Barack Obama. That caused great confusion uh, among the white left, which frankly takes yep. its cues uh, from black folks. What are the black folks doing? <laughs> I, I think we ought to do that too. <laughs> and so the black folks weren't doing anything except saying rah rah for Obama, and that led to a shutdown on the white left uh, as well. And so we had a, 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 a political campaign of 2008 in, in which the left, black and not black, uh, unilaterally demobilized themselves and became uh, irrelevant to the, to the discussion. And, and that could not have come at a worse time. What, what a trick uh, of, of history. Uh, here we enter uh, 2008, and the capitalist system collapses. What an opportunity for a leftist, you know? Something that happens not even once in a lifetime. And we are totally uh, demobilized. Uh, uh, that's, that's an opportunity uh, that passed uh, us by. Uh, here we have uh, a situation in which George Bush's failed offensive of 2003 uh, has put U.S. imperialism in an even weaker uh, situation than the one it was trying to extricate itself from through that 2003 offensive. And where is the left? Demobilized. <laughs>